You don't have to act like Lori Harvey or Sierra or Megan Good or any of these other women who have recently been crowned feminine goals. Learn what it means for your femininity to shine through your personality. You don't have to change who you are because even if you get this femininity stuff down to a science, you could be the most feminine woman in the world, but if you aren't being authentic, it's not going to work for you. Greetings Royals, it is Constance with QueenlyMe.com, the place where singles are learning love and pursuing purpose the right way, okay? I have really been learning a lot about femininity. And what made me want to learn more about femininity is I decided to find out more about where men's minds are when it comes to women. A lot of them actually said that femininity is kind of a lost art, they feel, when it comes to women. A lot of women operate in masculinity and we don't realize that we're doing it. So in the midst of learning about femininity, I started jotting down some feminine goals that I wanted to accomplish for 2021. And once I started doing that, these goals seem like some general, like single woman goals that all of us women should be doing really. So I decided to share them with you and maybe we can all conquer this together. So the first feminine goal is to take your measurements and find out what body type you have. Women love to shop, but a lot of us are spending a grip on clothing and we really don't know what we should be looking for and what we should be buying. Doing this is going to help you shop better and find those pieces that become staples in your wardrobe, things that you never have to get rid of. So when I say take your measurements, I mean measure around your bust, measure around your waist, your hips, around your arm, and around your thigh. And when I say body type, there are a lot of different kinds. Some of the popular ones are rectangle, inverted triangle, hourglass, pear, apple, and many, many others in between. When you know your body type and you dress for your body type, you look your best and you actually come to appreciate your body more instead of comparing yourself and your body to other people who are outside of that. Like if I'm a pear, why am I comparing myself to a rectangle? Why am I looking at what a rectangle has on and trying to go and buy that same exact outfit? A lot of us are really good for going in a store, seeing a mannequin all put together and buying the entire outfit that the mannequin has. But that mannequin probably isn't your size or shape. The second goal is to find your style within your body type of clothing you might actually be in love with a style that doesn't even flatter you. I love the boho look that's loose and free flowing with the boyfriend jeans. Once I figured out what my body type was, those are the exact styles of clothing that make me look like I'm wrapped in a paper sack. All this time, y'all, all this time. I was walking around here thinking I was cute. And I didn't even look my best. Don't let it happen to you. Because I have an hourglass shape, I need to always be asking myself, where is your waist? If I cannot see my waist in what I'm wearing, if I cannot find my waist in what I'm wearing, then I don't need to be wearing it and I don't need to be buying it. Or, you know, sometimes there are those things that you just really, really love and you really don't care how you look in them. If that's the case, then help yourself, honey. I'm not going to sit up here and say that you need to look your best 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Sometimes we just like what we like and we want what we want. So don't feel like you have to throw everything out. But just know that when you wear those things, you're probably not looking your best. If you're fine with it, then okay. 
The third goal is to find a signature scent. And I will almost go as far as to say you need at least two or three signature scents because some perfumes are season specific. There are some that you can wear in the spring, summer. There are some you can wear fall, winter. But there's also some that you can wear for specific situation. For instance, I learned that men are highly attracted to perfumes that have a vanilla scented base. So if you are going into a dating situation or you're going on a date with your spouse or your boyfriend, then you should have like a date scent or, you know, a work scent. There are some scents that actually energize you, like a lot of the fruitier based perfumes, especially those that have orange in them. Body mist and body sprays are okay to have at your desk, in your purse, in the car, but you really need a quality perfume that works well with your chemistry. The fourth goal is to practice mindfulness and work on having a more pleasant disposition. This is going to help you with that resting angry face. I know a lot of people call it something else, but I don't like that name. I was listening to another YouTuber and she was saying how nobody's face is really genetically set up to look angry naturally. So that look that is showing on your face has to be coming from within. But when you are mindful and you're present throughout your day, you maintain a mind of gratitude and you're thinking positively, you're gonna start appreciating and enjoying all the little things throughout your day. You're going to automatically have like this pleasant, positive aura that radiates from you, which is extremely feminine and attractive. The fifth goal is to learn what it means to truly be feminine and practice that according to your natural personality. Femininity is not about being phony. It's not about being the damsel in distress. It's not about seducing people and manipulating people into doing what you want them to do. It's about allowing the unique gifts that God has specifically deposited inside of women to shine through and be experienced and appreciated by other people. And everybody has their own specific way of how they go about doing that. You don't have to act like Lori Harvey or Sierra or Megan Good or any of these other women who have recently been crowned feminine goals. Learn what it means for your femininity to shine through your personality. You don't have to change who you are. Because even if you get this femininity stuff down to a science, you could be the most feminine woman in the world. But if you aren't being authentic, it's not going to work for you. The sixth goal is to learn what masculine behaviors you have and how to display them properly. I am learning that I have quite a few masculine habits and behaviors and tendencies that I didn't even realize and when I look back on certain situations, that really didn't work for me. And now I know it, things are starting to make so much more sense all of this time. And I was really like, what's the problem? So some of the masculine behaviors that women can have are being overly independent to the point where a man can't open the door for you or pull out your chair or offer to help you with anything without you giving him the, I don't need a man speech. Also being cold and emotionless, being rough, rude, and insensitive, being aggressive, bossy, and sarcastic. And don't get me wrong, calling these masculine behaviors does not insinuate that it's okay for a man to do these things. These are certain behaviors that aren't really characteristic of a woman's innate disposition. Now I understand that in the times that we live in now, sometimes it is necessary to exhibit masculine behaviors in order to get things done. But we can still do masculine behaviors in a feminine way without sacrificing the power behind it. You don't have to completely change who you are or everything that you do. It's simply realizing that there's a better, more effective way to do things as a woman. 
And once you really hone in on this, you'll start to find that you can get a lot more done without having to exert nearly as much effort or force. Women were created by God to receive. We are receivers by design. And when you use your femininity to do things effectively, then things will start coming to you. And all you have to do is receive it like you were meant to. The seventh goal is to redefine your definition of strong. Many of us women have had to sacrifice our femininity in order to survive, especially some of us black women. We've had to be rough around the edges and do the heavy lifting because in some of our lives, that wasn't there. So we had to fill in the gaps. And although it's very commendable how we have been resilient and how we have worked to shatter the glass ceilings over the years, a lot of the behaviors that we call strong can actually be an indication of pain and hurt and brokenness. True strength actually doesn't have to be loud. It doesn't have to be aggressive. And in many cases, it doesn't even have to be seen. And my phone died. But as I was saying, feeding into the distorted picture of what it looks like to be strong is actually keeping a lot of us from experiencing true success as women. We have got to stop ridiculing other women for being meek, mild, girly, pretty, just because it doesn't fit that distor distorted worldview of what we've adopted as a substitute for being strong. I'm always hearing Iyanla Van Zant correct people when they incorrectly refer to a person as strong for behaviors that are actually dysfunctional. And she'll say, no, that's not strength, that's brokenness. So don't feel like you have to act masculine to show your strength. There's tons of strength in being feminine too, and we have to do better as women about commending each other on those things as well. If you've made it to this point in the video, then hopefully I've said something helpful. Hopefully I've said something that resonated with you, something that you could share with someone else, because the best thing for a single to know is that they are not alone. Please like this video so that it can be accessible to other people like you. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. And thank you for watching. I will see you same place next time.